Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the black and white adjustment layer in Photoshop. I will also compare this technique with the other ways of converting an image to black and white, like grayscale and desaturate, and also how it compares to the camera raw black and white conversion. So first of all, let me show you where you can find all these other ways of turning an image into black and white. Well, you can go to the image adjustment and choose the option desaturate from here. By the way, it's good to know that whenever you see dot 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 behind one of the features here, that means it will open up a menu and it will give you additional features uh, to choose from. But when you don't see that option, it means it will be applied straight away without asking any questions. So if I click on this one, it will always be the same. You won't be able to control anything with this feature. So let me just undo this because that's not what we like to have no control over what we apply to our images. And let me show you another way of turning uh, the image into black and white. And that is actually not in the adjustments, but also under the image menu. It's under the mode where you can switch to grayscale. So from RGB, 8 bits per channel, we switch to grayscale, which will be also 8 bit, but not per channel. It will be per image. So I'm just going to turn it into grayscale. And if I go to the channels, that's the big difference here that we have only one channel now. So we merged the red, green and uh, blue channels into one. And this is our gray channel at the moment. So this is still a destructive way of turning the image into black and white because we lost a lot of information. Let me just go back once again and instead of choosing the black and white adjustment from the image menu, I am going to actually apply it from the adjustments panel. So there's the black and white adjustment layer. And once I use this, this will be completely non-destructive. So I can always turn it off, turn it on again and be able to change anything later on whenever I want to. So all these options that are available here, I will be able to use whenever I want to change them. So let's just go through these options now. First of all, we have the presets here. I can change the presets and choose one of these options from here and use, for example, infrared, which is quite interesting as a black and white adjustment. Then we have red filter. We have the high contrast red and blue filter. In this case, probably something like darker or blue filter will work quite well. Actually, I think I like darker the most. So there are a lot of presets here and we have also an auto option which will set all these values automatically based on the image content. Now, as you can see, we have the three main channels here, the red, greens and blues. And we also have these colors, the yellows, cyans and magentas. These are the colors from the CMYK color mode. So all these values can be used to say how bright or dark I want colors to end up in my black and white image. Because when you convert an image from color to black and white, you actually lose all the colors and you turn them into brightness values or luminance values. So that's what you can control here. For example, in this image, we know that we have quite a lot of blues in the background. So if I increase the blues, I will brighten up the background. Or if I turn it down, I will darken the background. We can do the same things with science as well. And you will notice immediately a problem uh, with uh, doing these very ex extreme changes with these values. And we will have an artifact showing up or a uh, de degradation in the quality of the image in these areas. And the reason for that is because I'm using a JPEG image. So it is not a high bit depth uh, in this image. We have actually quite low tonal range available. So that's why we see these artifacts. If I increase the brightness of these colors as well, we will be able to see it on the sky and the same even on the foreground. We will see uh, the degradation in quality. To avoid this, it is better to use a camera raw file. And let me just open up a camera raw file. I'm just going to open it up in Adobe Camera Raw and show you the difference here. So if I go to uh, the HSL grayscale panel 
and turn on the convert to grayscale option then we will have almost exactly the same features what we have in the black and white adjustment but here we have even more colors to work with so here we can also use targeted adjustment tool so I just selected that and I can click on the sky and drag it to the right or drag it to the left to turn it down and you can see even if I do a very extreme change we still won't have any pixelation or posterization in the sky so you can see it works really well here in camera raw I can do that with almost any of these colors without losing the quality and I just wanted to mention this because it's good to know that if you work with camera raw files you can avoid these problems now let me just set this back to default by clicking on this icon here at the bottom reset the adjustment so that's the default uh, values and I would like to make sure that you know that this is the on image adjustment tool with which you can click on a color and drag it up and down so selecting colors from the image instead of changing the values here on the right that's again just good to know and there's two more things I would like to show you one of them is how to add tint to the image by just simply clicking on this and then you can choose a color which will be applied to the image something like that will give this sepia look and the other thing is how to use a blend mode and what type of blend modes might work well with the black and white adjustment for example if you set it to overlay that can create a really cool almost HDR effect or just a very high contrast edgy look on the image so let me show you before and after and of course the tint can be turned off and even then the effect will work quite well or the tint can be adjusted to a color which you would like to emphasize in the image uh, something like a, a purple color maybe some somewhere from here might add this very mystical look to the whole image but let me just change back the blend mode to normal and turn off the tint as well and there's one more last thing I would like to show you and that is how to use the, the mask well we can use the mask in several ways you can for example use the uh, gradient tool and just draw a gradient from the sky and that will show the sky colors and also um, the colors in the background more while trying to maintain the black and white here in the front and then we can switch to the brush tool and we can draw over these areas with uh, white just to again turn them back to black and white so we can selectively apply the adjustment if we start using masking so we can switch again back to black and just draw over the sky once again and we can even draw over the the background here so of course I'm not doing anything uh, precisely at this stage I just wanted to show you how it works so if you want to use this very precisely you can always make a selection for the castle and make sure you preserve that in uh, black and white why the background can be turned into um, colors into its original colors and the good thing about using the adjustment layer is that you can always invert the mask and you can also check the mask how it looks by old clicking on it and as you can see we can see there's a couple of things we can just draw over once again like these here in the background to make sure that they are all uh, set to black something like that and I would click on it again just to switch back to the normal view of the image and then I can press command I or control I on PC to invert uh, the mask of the adjustment layer and now I can see a bit more here which we can just turn to black and white so there's a lot of things you can do with the black and white adjustment layer you can create these color pop effects like here and you can go back to make more adjustments by clicking on the adjustment icon here in the properties panel that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial I hope you found this useful and if you want to find out more about the other adjustments layer here in Photoshop make sure you join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus thanks a lot for your attention